All right, the NFL draft is done, so so I'm going to bring you five players that I think you should go trade for right now in Dynasty Football, and I think it's going to help you out with your Dynasty teams. Do me a massive favor. Drop a like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content, and I want you to comment down below right now before you watch the video and tell me the one player on your mind right now that you want to go trade for. I'm going to give you five players, and I think this could be very helpful. Let me know if it is. And if you want access to help from myself, from Badaki, a personal DM, if you want us to grade your dynasty team, if you want dynasty rankings, rookie, super flex, and more, use our code LAND, L-A-N-D, when signing up on Flock Fantasy. There's a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And DM us on Discord when you sign up, we'll get you all your perks. But the number one player, or yeah, I would say the number one player, and a lot of you guys are probably going to be annoyed, but let me just get through this. Traylon Burks. I think you should go trade for Traylon Burks. I've been saying this for about six months, the entire offseason, but I think he could be absolutely exploding in 2023. And I don't believe you'll be able to get him this cheap again for quite some time. He is currently ranked as the wide receiver 29 in the community. And hold on, he's my wide receiver 16. And I will totally explain why I believe he's going to smash in 2023. But firstly, let's talk about Traylon Burks. Friendly reminder, this was a first round wide receiver. They traded AJ Brown, Tennessee did. Now, is that the right move? Who knows? But they made the investment, right? Probably not the right move. But they made the investment on Traylon Burks in the first round with pick 18. In fact, there's not a wide receiver in the 2023 class that was drafted earlier than Traylon Burks. Now, that's not to suggest that Jackson Smith and Jigba won't be better than Burks, okay? But it's to let you know the investment that this team made. And talking about first round wide receivers and teams investing into them, let's have a look at the last five years. The wide receivers that have gone in the first round. 21 total wide receivers have gone in the first round. The players you see in black are players that I believe I would consider hits. And the players that you see in red, I would consider players that are probably busts. The orange players, I would say TBC, we don't know just yet. And Traylon Burks is in that category. But first round wide receivers typically turn into very good fantasy options. If you look at first round wide receivers in the last four, uh, sorry, from 2018 to 2021, the reason I did that is because I feel like 2022 is too early to say. But from 2018 to 2021, 15 wide receivers were drafted in the first round. And six of them had a top 12 finish, which is 40%. And 10 of them have a top 24 finish. Over 67% of the wide receivers drafted in the first round have returned top 24 seasons for you. And only three have busted. That is 20%. So look, when we look at those unknown guys in this category so far, Tony, Bateman, Jamison Williams, and Traylon Burks, I would say that Traylon Burks has a great chance to return value and give you a top 24 season, if not this year, very, very soon. But think about this, the Titans as an organization, everything they did this entire offseason helps Traylon Burks. There's not a scenario that you can point to a move that they have made that has not helped Traylon Burks. They improved the offensive line, drafted what a lot of people had as the best tackle, tackle slash guard in the draft in Peter Skaronsky. Okay, they brought in another tackle in free agency, Andre Dillard. Obviously, they lost uh, Taylor Luan, but he was aging anyway. And they also drafted a second tackle in the 2023 draft. Not only did they do that, they brought in quarterback competition for Ryan Tannehill. And it looked pretty, pretty lonely for Traylon when it was just Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis. Well, now it's Ryan Tannehill and Will Levis, and that will be a legit battle in camp. Probably Tannehill wins it, but at minimum, you know, it makes me excited thinking about how Will Levis utilized Wandell Robinson at Kentucky back in 2021. We could see a similar type of usage for Traylon in this offense. And lastly, they didn't add a single wide receiver. Robert Woods left and no one of significance replaced him. They didn't draft a wide receiver, not even in the first, second, third, fourth. They didn't draft a wide receiver. And the wide receiver that they brought in, I think Chris Moore, come on, that's just a guy. Traylon will probably lead this team in targets this year. And we saw flashes of brilliance from him last year, even though a lot of people don't want to talk about it. He only played 11 games due to a concussion. He also had a wrist and a toe injury. Um, but we saw consistent improvement from him 
with a season that was pretty much from hell. If you look at weeks one to nine versus weeks 10 to 18, all right, the targets go up, the receptions go up, the receiving yards go up, and the fantasy points per game go uh, goes up. One of my biggest comps in the pre-draft process last year for Traylon Burks was Debo Samuel, okay? And keep in mind that Debo Samuel didn't come out year one and be a superstar, okay? It took a while for Debo Samuel to really find his groove in the NFL, okay? You gotta give Traylon a little bit of grace, but when you look at their analytics this year, let's compare Debo to Traylon. Debo was first in yards after catch per reception. Traylon surprisingly was top 12 in that category as a rookie. I love to see that. If you look at yards per reception, Traylon had a better yards per reception than Debo, a better yards per route run, a better um, A dot, a better drop percentage, and a better contested catch rate. So you can see some similarities in the areas that these wide receivers both win. And if you look at week 11 versus Green Bay specifically, he was fully healthy, he was himself, and he was dominant. Go back and watch that game versus Green Bay if you want to see the upside of Traylon Burks, he had seven catches for 111 yards and he dominated Jare Alexander. And last thing I'll say on Traylon is the opportunities are going to be there. Okay. The two players who led this team in targets are gone. Robert Woods and Austin Hooper, who combined for 151 targets, 151 targets vacated already in a wide receiver room that had a clear need and they didn't fill that need. Uh, it's Westbrook Akini. It's Kyle Phillips, it's Chig. And this is also a pro Chig Aconquo video. Chig Aconquo and Traylon Burks are set to smash. But last year, Traylon Burks averaged 4.9 targets per game while only averaging 57.8% of the snaps. He's going to be averaging guys around 90% of the snaps this year, heading into his second year. He won't be at that 57% if he's healthy. In the last two weeks of the season, he averaged seven and a half targets per game while seeing 73.5% of the snaps, okay? A healthy Traylon in 2023 is going to see probably seven targets per game. I think that's a modest expectation for him, given what we've seen them do. So if you're looking to trade for him, a couple of names that I'd be willing to, to send away and just start conversations around, Terry McLaurin, Nick Chubb, George Kittle, DeAndre Swift, Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Hollywood Brown, Derek Henry, Miles Sanders, Isaiah Pacheco. Those are all names that I would personally be, be willing to start a conversation. Now, are all those names going to be perfect one for one deals? No, but begin a conversation and see where you guys land. And if you're looking at picks, I love this right now. If you have the 110 in your dynasty rookie draft, apparently, According to the community, that is the starting point. If I can send the 110 for Traylon Burks, I feel like an absolute king. I would do that today if I could get it done. So, you know, I'm not going to say this is the last chance because there'll be plenty more videos about Traylon Burks, but at wide receiver 29, I think he is a smash buy. I want him in every league. This is the year I think Traylon is going to break out. All right. The second player I think you should go trade for, and this one is more of a... This is a cheap running back for depth for win now teams, okay? That is Samaje Pirine. The community currently has him ranked as RB51. I have him ranked as RB49. Keep in mind, this was one of Sean Payton's first moves controlling this team, okay? Was signing Samaje Pirine. I certainly thought this team would go running back in the draft. It was one of the deepest running back classes we had seen in quite some time but they didn't do that which to me publicly stated hey we've already filled that backup slash fill in for javante role with samaj p ryan and when you look at the average annual contract that he got he got more money uh per, per year on average than alexander madison than jeff wilson raheem mostert devin singletary so he got paid a pretty penny by this team and keep in mind that sean payton is not afraid to do a running back by committee. In 2017 and 2018, Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram were one of the best running back duos in the NFL. Now, clearly, Samaj P. Ryan is not what Mark Ingram was, okay? Or nowhere near what Alvin Kamara was. But Samaj P. Ryan was in a very important part of the Bengals receiving game last year. He had over, I think, 60 targets, if I'm not mistaken. And the second question here is, Hey, when will Javante Williams even be ready to go? We keep seeing mixed reviews. Hey, he'll be ready week one. 
Others are saying he's going to miss time. The most recent example I can think of a running back who had a similar injury than Javante Williams is J.K. Dobbins. And J.K. Dobbins, we were told last year, he'll be ready to go for week one. He'll be ready for go to go. And it's not just the ACL, guys, that Javante, uh, that's not only part of that injury. There was more damage, uh, including other parts of his knees, of his knee, just like J.K. Dobbins. So J.K. Dobbins missed the first two weeks of the season. He wasn't himself at all. And then he ended up missing nine games in total. And I'm not suggesting that Javante has the same fate. But what I am suggesting is there could be this up and down season for Javante Williams. And who would benefit if that were the case? Well, the person who would benefit would probably be Samaj P. Ryan. And GM George Patton for the Broncos actually has a quote on this. He says, Samaj can be a starter. He's good on first, second. He's good on third down. He has really good hands. He's solid in protection. And then he also said at that time that they still liked Latavius Murray. And they'll see where that goes. Latavius Murray did not sign with this team. He is a Buffalo Bill. And to be fair, I get where George Patton is coming from because, yeah, P. Ryan was really successful as a starter for the Bengals. Keep in mind, Joe Mixon had some injury issues himself over the past couple of years, but specifically last year from weeks 11 to 13 for the Bengals, Joe Mixon was out with an injury and Samaj P. Ryan was the starter. Well, in that three week period, Samaj P. Ryan was the running back two in fantasy football. And if you want to look at points per game, he was still the running back two. okay? 23.6 points per game. He was absolutely handling the running back one workload. In fact, he was more efficient on the year than Joe Mixon was himself. The best part of this take is the price point. I mean, if you're looking to trade for him, here are some names that currently have similar value. Tyquan Thornton, Daniel Bellinger, Mike Gusecki, Jawan Johnson, McCall Hardman, Isaiah Hodgins, Hunter Renfo, Terrace Marshall. Start a conversation with those names. Start a conversation with the player on your team that you're thinking, mm, they probably won't go for that. Start the conversation and see where you get to. And apparently at the moment, it's around the 305. I would say a mid to late third round pick. You could potentially get the job done, especially if it's if Samaje is on a team that is not trying to compete right there, right then. All right. The number three player that I think you should go trade for right now is Jahan Dotson. The community currently has him ranked as wide receiver 31. He is my wide receiver 22. Jahan Dotson, I think was one of the most overlooked rookies in 2023 from this wide receiver class. It was so good. Garrett Wilson was a smash. Chris Olave was a smash. Drake London looked great. Christian Watson won people leagues. But Jahan Dotson quietly had a very, very good year, and I think he was overlooked. On the year, he only played 12 games, but he put up uh, seven touchdowns, 500 yards, finished as a wide receiver 51. But if you extrapolate those numbers over a 17 game season, he was on track to have 50 receptions over 700 yards, 10 touchdowns, and he was on track to finish as the wide receiver 27. Now, of course, extrapolating isn't perfect, but you can see what he was on track to become, right? And if you want to look just at points per game, well, Jahan Dotson last year had more points per game than Drake London. He had more points per game than George Pickens. He had more points per game than Deontay Johnson. He was within 2.1 points per game to Garrett Wilson, Debo Samuel, Hollywood Brown, DJ Moore, Christian Watson, Brandon Cooks. Seven of 12 games, Jahan Dotson scored 10 or more fantasy points. When it was Carson Wentz and not Taylor Heineke, Dotson was a legit flex option for a lot of leagues. And why don't we look at that little breakdown, right? If you look at Taylor Heineke versus Carson Wentz for Jahan Dotson, clearly Carson Wentz was the better quarterback for him. He had more receptions, targets, yards, points per game, and touchdowns with Carson Wentz under quarterback. And we know Taylor Heineke, like myself, like a lot of people, has this fetish, this preference for Terry McLaurin. So it's understandable, rightfully so. But Dotson wasn't really given the same treatment between those two. Regardless, there's a new quarterback in town let's see what sam howe does but let's keep looking at last year for a second let's look at dotson's analytics if you compare him to the rest of the league his targets and receptions are where he's lacking 
again, keep in mind, guys, he missed five games last year. But let's look at some of the things that he really excelled in. If you look at yards per reception, uh, first, let's look versus the 2022 wide receiver class. Yards per reception, he was second in the class this year. He was tied for first in touchdowns. He had the second best A dot, and he had the third best contested catch percentage. Now, if you look at Dotson versus the entire NFL, well, he had the 11th best yards per reception. He was 16th in touchdowns, fourth in A dot, 12th in contested catch percentage, and then 42nd in yards after catch per attempt. I personally think that with Curtis Samuel being on that team last year, Curtis Samuel took a lot of yards after catch um, opportunities away from both Terry and Jahan Dotson. And I personally think that that could change over the next year or so because we have Eric Bieniemy in town, which means at minimum there will be change and Bieniemy knows how to get the best out of his weapons. The Chiefs were top 15 in passing attempts per game every year. He was the offensive coordinator. Now, of course, they had Patrick Mahomes, right? So, of course, they would have been. But the point is, he knows how to utilize his weapons. And right now, Jahan Dotson is one of those sleeping giants on this team that could absolutely be looking at a breakout in 2023. I'm looking to sell him at the moment for the following players. Starting a conversation with the following players. How about his teammate, Terry McLaurin? I will take Jahan Dotson in Dynasty. How about Nick Chubb or George Kittle? DeAndre Swift, maybe sell high on Swift and get a young wide receiver who has this potential to be a Devonta Smith-esque type player. Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Hollywood Brown, Derek Henry, Miles Sanders, Isaiah Pacheco. Depending on your team needs, I would absolutely start a conversation with those names. And just like Traylon Burks, these are two guys that I love at their price point. You can apparently get him for the 110. That's fantastic. You're out of the Flowers range, out of the Addison, out of the Johnson range. At least you should be if your league knows what they're doing. Uh, and the 110 is great. There's not a player I prefer over Dotson at the 110. All right, the fourth player I'm going to go ahead and suggest you guys trade for, and this might be low key. It's not that I have not heard no one talk about it, but not many. How about Irv Smith? Let's talk about Irv Smith. Currently, the community's tight end 24. He's my tight end 23. And this is going to be really simple, short, and sweet for Irv Smith. Okay? It doesn't mean to be more complicated than this. Hayden Hurst is gone. And they didn't draft the tight end. Okay, they didn't draft a tight end. Big deal. Well, they didn't draft a tight end in one of the best tight end classes in a decade. I thought for sure the Bengals would have brought a tight end onto their team in this class. They didn't do so. Hayden Hurst is a Panther. He walked in free agency. In 13 games, Hayden Hurst saw 68 targets. If you extrapolate that to a 17 game season, on track for 89 targets, okay? This team, again, had eight picks, did not replace Hayden Hurst. Irv Smith will be the starting tight end for this team, unless some sort of trade happens that I'm not you know, currently seeing, but He's going to step into that tight end one role, and I could actually see him having an expanded impact in the passing game compared to Hayden Hurst. Secondly, look at the offense he's joining. It do, like This doesn't need to be a difficult take. He's got Joe Burrow. This offense was fifth in pass attempts per game last year, seventh in points per game last year. Irv Smith is a young, athletic, hybrid tight end who just hasn't ever been able to stay healthy. But if he's able to stay healthy, Check this comparison out. I think he could do kind of what Gerald Everett did last year for the Chargers. And think about that. Everett was a streaming top 12 tight end in redraft leagues. He brought a lot of value. So if you're weak at the tight end position, he could improve his value and he could start for you potentially if things go his way. It's that simple. It's that simple, people. And you don't have to send very much at all. In tight end premium leagues, it might be different, but in your non-tight end premium leagues, you could send like a Zeke Elliott, a McCole Hardman, Zamir White, Michael Carter. I mean, pick a role player on a team and start a conversation. Uh, a mid to late third apparently can get the job done. And I like that sort of bet. And the last player I think you should go trade for in this video, I brought him about two months ago. And his value hasn't changed. It's actually gotten lower in the community. Brandon Cooks. I brought him a couple months ago before the trade to the Cowboys. I thought he would get traded and he would go to a great situation. 
Well, guys, a couple months ago when I brought this take, he was a wide receiver 60 in the community's eyes. Today, he's a wide receiver 62. I don't know how he lost value joining the Cowboys, but apparently he did to the community. I have him ranked as my wide receiver 54, and I think he is a fantastic buy right now. Firstly, Brandon Cooks, all he does is produce. All he does is put up numbers. He has a vast history of putting up fantasy and real life numbers. Let's have a look at his career. Six of nine seasons, he put up over a thousand receiving yards. Six of nine seasons, he had five or more touchdowns. Six of nine seasons, he finished as a wide receiver 20 or higher in fantasy football. In four of those nine seasons, he was a wide receiver 15 or higher in fantasy football. His average targets per year for his nine year career is 107.1. His career targets per game is 7.3. That is ridiculous when you consider he came into the league nine years ago and the league has slowly transitioned into becoming very, very pass focused. That wasn't the case when Brandon Cooks joined and still on his career, he's averaging 7.3 targets per game across all nine seasons. All Brandon Cooks does is put up numbers consistently. It's not sexy, but it's flex worthy. And don't forget how damn bad that Texans team was last year. Lest we forget the Texans in 2022, they were 30th in points per game as a team. They were 31st in yards per game, meaning second worst. They were 25th in pass yards per game. Only one other team had fewer first downs. And Davis Mills, their starting quarterback, was 29th in QBR. Speaking of Davis Mills, let's talk about that incredible season he had. Completed 61% of his passes, threw 15 interceptions and 17 touchdowns, regressed in almost every category you can think of. They had to put Jeff Driscoll in. Well, guess what? Brandon Cooks got traded to the Dallas Cowboys. And now Brandon Cooks is joining a group of Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Tony Pollard, a team that scored the fourth most points per game last year. He's joining that crew, and he is clearly stepping into a defined role as the wide receiver two for this team. Michael Gallup is there, I hear you, but he's not the same player. Maybe he recovers a little bit more, but Brandon Cooks will be the second target on this team. This team currently has 163 vacated targets from Dalton Schultz and Noah Brown leaving. While he's aging, he's got proven production, and this is a dream situation for Brandon Cooks to be in. The best part is his price. Wide receiver 62. That is so cheap if you're competing right now and you're trying to win and you just need an extra flex. We're talking start conversations around Jacoby Myers, Alec Pierce, Alan Lazard, Isaiah Likely, Chase Claypool, Elijah Mitchell, Tyler Algier, if anyone still believes in him. And apparently... When you look at draft capital, the 211 to the 301 or so is where you should start that conversation. But personally, for me, I don't think you will find a wide receiver at the 211 that's going to help you win more games in fantasy this year than Brandon Cook. So those are five players. I'm just catching my breath now. I just talked straight through that entire thing. I didn't take a single break. Can you guys believe that? Drop a like for me. Come on. Uh, show some love. We're, we're uh, hustling over here on the channel. Uh, those are five players I am currently sending trades out for. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Do me a favor. Drop a like for some love. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And we'll see you guys in the next video. All love. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.